home. Yeah. Oh, he's on there too. Where's the red pool? Let's go west. Trigger Spoon Jr., baby. Yep. All right. What color? I think it's the orange one. That's the one I was working for me at Albany. Oh yeah. I think it's the biggest trout I've ever caught, Cal. <laughs> yeah. Do you want results next time you go trout fishing? Get yourself a set of trigger spoons and put a limit on the stringer. They flat out produce. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. The Cookie Monster loves cookies and trout, well they love the Trigger Spoon Junior, just like that. Um, fact of the matter is, the two biggest trout that we've caught on the channel this year both came on Trigger Spoon Juniors and there's an important reason for that. That fish you saw in the opening, man, that was Wes Ward. He was using an orange Trigger Spoon just like this with the chrome back and uh, Oh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago now, I caught my biggest trout of the year on the same exact spoon up at Lake Elmanor, and it's it's all about the situation, okay? Um, we are in a very unique weather pattern this year. In fact, we had the driest, warmest February on record in Northern California, and when you look at water temperatures, surface temperature, it's perfect for trout, but we're not finding the active trout up on the surface. Um, trout have been hard to get, I'm not going to lie. We go out on the water, we work the surface, we see fish on the surface, visually we see them, they'll take a midge here and there, maybe they'll pick off a bee or something floating on the surface. The bottom line is we haven't been able to catch those fish. The more active fish have been down in the water column anywhere from 10 to 30 feet deep and the fish that are there, while they're more active, at least in terms of feeding, than the fish we're seeing up top, they aren't pushovers either. So we've had to really adhere to my philosophy of trolling, okay? We've had to slow down and we've had to downsize our lures. Um, Collins Lake the other day, we started out with mag lips. That's where you saw Wes catch that big fish. We started off with mag lips. Um, I was running a speed spoon. Um, Wes caught a fish right away on a mag lip, trolling fast. But after that, it was the Dead Sea. Um, and we fished for several hours without another hookup. Um, we found an area up in the narrows that seemed to be holding more fish than other areas of the lake. And uh, then we went right to my, you know, my trolling 101 philosophy. Start off fast and hard. If that's not working, start down, downsizing, start slowing down. Um, we broke out the flies, the threaded worms, the threaded gulp, and the Trigger Spoon Junior. We pulled our speed down to 1.5 to 1.8 and the hookup started coming. It wasn't wide open by any means, but we caught some very nice fish and a, a big part of our success was due to the Trigger Spoon Junior. It's compact, it has great action at low speeds, it's not intimidating, and those hard to get fish, fish that aren't really super actively feeding, they see a little package like that, it's got a lot of action, it's staying in the strike zone, just flat out works and uh, it's been working for us for about three weeks now. It's been a been a real day saver for us. So I'll just toss that out there. Now you don't have to be running a Trigger Spoon Junior, but keep that philosophy in mind. Get out on the water, you're having a tough day, start downsizing, start slowing down, concentrate on an area that you think are holding fish. When I got up there in the Narrows, at Collins, by the power lines, I saw some very nice fish on the surface, I was marking some very nice fish on my sonar unit all the way down to 30 feet. And uh, you know, Wes, Wes is a seasoned angler. He's a very seasoned bass angler. Um, and he's really been picking up trout fishing well. But when I saw those fish, I said, Wes, this is our spot. There's fish here. There, we know there's fish here. Rather than covering a bunch of ground, we're gonna grind on these fish. And we did, we covered an area that was maybe, maybe an eighth of a mile 
um, down from the power lines and maybe a couple hundred yards above the power lines and that's where those fish were were concentrated and we worked those fish we worked them hard and uh, our efforts were rewarded so just remember if you get out there it's tough start downsizing start slowing down break out that gulp break out the gulp minnows the gulp worms the natural night crawlers stuff like that the small spoons Trigger Spoon Jr. is an excellent choice. The Dick Knights, um, the Sniper Spoon from Vance's Tackle, all that stuff will work. The key is compact package, lots of action, keep it in the strike zone, and you can get those, those kind of hard to hook fish to go and uh, put plenty of Pro Cure on your spoons and your baits. Um, doesn't work that great on the flies, but on the spoons, on the worms, on the gulp, Put that Pro Cure on there. It's got those aminos that trigger strikes. And when you're having a hard time getting hit, every single strike counts. I mean, those are those are all money strikes. Especially, you know what, Collins, those fish we got were probably, uh, we got a couple over three, a couple over two and a half. They were very nice trout. So you want to make the most of it when you're out on the water. So that's just something to think about. Put that in your strategy bank. When is this situation going to change? I don't know. It's a little breezy today. We got a little front coming in. It's going to change things a little bit. The bottom line is though, and this is kind of what I've deciphered from this, and I don't have a benchmark because again, this has been the warmest, driest February on record. We're into March. We still haven't had much rain and uh, I don't have anything to compare it with. But what I think is going on is water temperatures are elevated over what they generally are at this time of the year. The bait fish are kind of dismayed, but the days are still relatively short. The days are shorter than they're gonna be in April and May. And uh, for whatever reason, these factors seem to be suppressing the bite and it seems to be keeping the more active fish down in the water column. Now at Collins, it's a great bait fish lake. It's full of threadfin shad. And all the shad, I was marking little pods of shad, but the shad I was marking, they were in 30, 40 feet of water and they were sticking right tight to the bottom. Typically, you know, in the springtime, I'm seeing shad bust on the surface. I'm seeing shad up near the top and I love to go out there. I surface troll for trout. I always have a Rebel Pop R rigged up to throw at any surface explosions I see. I usually get a few bass, but uh, that is not happening right now. The, the bait is holding you know, deep. The fish are holding deep. The active trout are holding deep. I talked to a bass guy out there. He was fishing 20 to 30 feet deep. So don't be fooled by these great weather conditions. The fishing's in a bit of a funk. You're gonna have to get out there, work for your fish. You can't catch them from the couch though. So kind of employ these tips and uh, I think you're gonna be yelling fish on next time you hit the water. If you haven't had a chance to hit the subscribe button, please do that. Hit that little notification bell and you'll get to hear me anytime I'm on here blabbering about fishing or the cookie monster or whatever it is. And if you're looking for quality trout fishing gear, including a set of my trigger spoons that come in six different colors, go on over to the Fish Hunt Shoot Production Store and uh, we will hook you up at, with some great gear at a great price, guys. Stuff I believe in, stuff you see me fishing right here on the channel. Anyway, I'm out of here. You have a great day and I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. Thanks a lot, guys.